Hi, I am Colby from FTC Team 14323, the Halfwit Hatchlings. This is the fourth video in our series describing holonomic drivetrains. In this video, we'll be going over the code for holonomic drivetrains. Before we start going over the code, let's take a look at how we have our programs organized. Our team uses three different types of programs. Autonomous programs, marked by AU, hardware programs, marked by HW, and teleop, marked by TO. The autonomous programs control the autonomous portion of the uh, game. The hardware programs describe the different functions and subsystems of our robot, and the teleop are, programs are for the teleop control sections. The first thing we'll be discussing is the hardware mechanism drive. The first part of this is the imports. These will define some aspects we'll be using later in the program. Next, we define the motors and their powers. We also define our slowdown here, which we use to speed up and slow down our teleop control. We have the elapsed time, which will be used later for timeout, which is to make sure that the robot isn't running into a wall. That will be explained more later. We have our hardware map and our gyro. Some more setup for the gyro here, and we start getting down to here. This area is describing our wheels or our wheel gearing to shaft. So we have our ratio of shaft rotations to wheel rotations. We have how many motor ticks there are in one shaft rotation. And from that, we are able to get the ticks per wheel rotation. Here we set up the robot's dimensions, such as the robot's diameter and the wheel's diameter. We use the wheel diameter to get the circumference. This is used in the autonomous code, which we will not be discussing today. Next, we have the init, or the initialization. Here we take the hardware map, and we assign the variables for each motor to the actual, D the actual DC motor on the robot. We set their direction, which for our robot, they're reverse, yours may be different. We set their zero power behavior, behavior to break, and set their power to zero, so that they will start off still. Here is some more initialization for the gyro, and we are on to our teleop control. So this is the simple version of the teleop control, which is what we call mechanism drive. First things first, we set our motors to run without an encoder, and this is how we calculate the power. Well, all it is, is it is the stick 1y, plus or minus the stick 1x, plus or minus stick 2x divided by 2. This will make it so that you can control the forward, back, left, right, and turning all at the same time. We have the raw max, which is the maximum of the powers, the largest one. Since the motors can only take a power of a scale of negative one to one, we have to find the biggest one and see if it's greater than one. If it's greater than one, we scale everything down so the greatest one is one. This preserves the ratio, so we move in the correct direction. If it's less than one, then we just input the power. If we press the A button, then we set the slowdown to 0.5. If we press the Y button, slowdown will be one. Our motor power is multiplied by the slowdown to get the final speed of each motor. That concludes the normal mechanism drive. Next, we have field-oriented drive. Field-oriented drive uses trigonometry. In order to learn how that works, you can refer back to the previous video, or just continue on here. Once again, we set our motors to run without encoder, and we find out our power based on our stick 1x and stick 1y. So, if they aren't moved, or if they're equal to zero, we have our direction and power equal to zero. If they are moved, then we use trigonometry to figure out which way they're moving. So for the direction, which is the heading radians, we use uh, math.atan2 with the stick 1x and the stick 1y. That figures out the direction based on the x and y value. Here, we calculate the heading power, or the speed of the motors. This is the minimum of the square root of stick 1x times stick 1x plus stick 1y times stick 1y, and 1. 
So if it's greater than one, it will become one. If it's less than, it will become itself. This is basic Pythagoras theorem. Here's where we calculate our power. First things first, we have the heading power, which is calculated up here, times the either sine or cosine of the heading radians, which we calculate right here, plus the gyro heading, plus one quarter pi. If you had a plus pattern omni drive, you would remove the one quarter pi. But if you have an X pattern or a mechanum drive, you will want to add the one quarter pi in. We then subtract our stick 2x, which is for turning, and we multiply, well, we multiply the stick 2x by 0.5 or divide it by 2, then we subtract it. Next, we get the raw max, which is, again, the maximum of all of the powers, or the highest, and we have to scale it down if it's above 1. Once again, we have our slowdown. For A, slows it to half speed, Y goes full speed. Next is a little bit of code that makes it so that when pressing on the D-pad, the robot moves robot-oriented. Finally, we have the motors set their power to move in the correct direction. So before we move on to the actual Teleop program, uh, I want to give a brief reminder of what the difference is between normal mechanism drive and field-oriented drive. Mechanism drive, or the normal mechanism drive, will move according to the robot. If you press forward, it'll move forward from the robot's perspective. What field-oriented drive does is it will move it forward from your perspective. So that is why we need the gyro in there. Moving to teleop. In the teleop code, there are many lines of code that we will not be discussing as they do not pertain to the mechanism drive. First, we have the mechanism drive as a subroutine here, importing the hardware mechanism drive subroutine that we have above. Next, we set up the gyro, and we have a few miscellaneous variables here. Now into the run op mode, so next we have telemetry, and we init the mechanism drive, and here it's just running until we say to go. It'll give us telemetry, saying that we're, almost, that we're ready. Here we are initializing the, or completing the initialization of the gyro, and then we are, here is the actual part where we are using the subroutine. First of all, we get our gyro, and we have to decide whether or not we want field-oriented drive or normal mechanism drive. That is decided by the B button and the X button. That sets the normal drive to true or normal drive to false. Here, we zero the gyro. So what happens is, when starting off, the robot may not be facing away from you. What you need to do is you need to pivot the robot so that it's facing directly away from you and press both bumpers. This should zero the gyro so that it will think that away from you is forward, which is what you want it to do. Next, we say if normal drive is true from up here, then do mechanism drive, which requires the stick, uh, stick 1y, stick 1x, stick 2, at X. So, uh, forward, back, left, right, turning, and then A and Y for the slowdown. If we don't have normal drive, we do field-oriented drive, which requires forward and back, the one stick 1X, one or stick 1Y, stick 1X, stick 2X, gamepad A and gamepad Y. Then we have the IMU heading and the gamepad directions. Um, we have forward backwards, left right, turning left and right, slow down, speed up, and the gyro here is angles, so it's current angle, plus the zeroed heading, or minus the zeroed heading. Then we have the gamepad right, gamepad left, gamepad up, and gamepad down. And that is basically everything for the mechanism drive. If you have any questions, post it in the comments down below, and look at our other videos if you haven't and i hope this helps this is colby from team ftc 14323 signing off